Hi friends, today is Friday, April 10th, 2020, and it's Good Friday. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about why today is such a good, good Friday. But I'd like to start out with a question. Can you tell me why was Jesus crucified? What was the actual charge that sentenced him to death? Well, let's examine this question. First of all, the people and the religious leaders were grumbling that Jesus was eating with sinners. Jesus was eating with sinners. That brings a question to mind. Wasn't Ray Franz disfellowshipped for having lunch with a person who had disassociated himself? I don't know, just a, just a question. Anyway, Jesus was mocked while he hung on that cross. He actually claimed to be equal with God, the great I am, when he said this, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Then took they up stones to cast at him. But Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them and so passed by. I understand that the New World Translation changed this scripture. If Jesus did not claim to be the great I am in this scripture, then why did the religious leaders and the people take up stones to cast at him, to kill him? What did he say, if something different than that, that would have possibly infuriated them so much? Take a look at John 10. The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone you not, but for blasphemy. And because you being a man, make yourself God. You see, the charge that sentenced him to death, that sentenced him to death, was because being a man, he claimed himself to be God. Therefore, the Jews sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath, but said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Now, I was going to leave Watchtower out of this, but I just couldn't. So I want to show you what JW.org has to say about this very same scripture. Here it is on their website, John chapter 5, verse 18. This is why the Jews began seeking all the more to kill him. Because not only was he breaking the Sabbath, but he was also calling God his own father, making himself equal to God. Now it's got a little footnote symbol there right after that. So let's take a look at the footnote. Making himself equal to God while properly referring to God as his father. Jesus never claimed equality with God. Now hold on a minute. So according to JW.org, the Jews sought to kill him based on a claim that he never made. Scripture says he made himself equal to God. But JW.org says this is not the case. And look at how interesting that little symbol I have circled there. That is the occult al alchemy symbol for wisdom. So maybe according to the occult, Jesus never made himself equal to God, but he most certainly did according to scripture. You see, at the time, the Jewish leaders were very, very corrupt. The office of the high priest was an office that could be purchased, and Caiaphas did purchase this office. What most infuriated these people was Jesus' claim to lordship, Jesus' posture of authority while speaking to people in the streets, while speaking to the religious leaders, and while in the synagogue infuriated them. His messiahship infuriated them, and his presumed right to forgive sins infuriated them as well. You see, the Old Testament is all about the coming Messiah. The coming Messiah through the line and lineage of David would save the Jews. Jesus fulfilled every single one of those scriptures in the Old Testament about the Messiah. 
But the Jews rejected the king. They rejected the Messiah and they killed the king. They killed the Messiah. The acceptance of worship from so many, most of whom he healed and raised from the dead and forgave their sins, infuriated them. And most, most importantly, the audacity of a man claiming to be God infuriated them. The reason Jesus died was because he acted like the incarnate son of God fully God, fully man. He spoke like the incarnate son of God. He forgave sins like the incarnate son of God. He healed and he raised from the dead like the incarnate son of God. He did not deny the accusations that were coming at him that he was the incarnate son of God. So Jesus is hanging there with nails through his hands, nails through his feet. You know, what they would do is they would nail them to the cross while laying down. And then they would upright that cross and then they would let it fall into a uh, hole that would, was already dug. So the weight of his body hanging there, jo actually jarring when it fell into the hole, ripped ripped his body. As he hung there, he could not get a breath because the weight pulling his body down was collapsing his diaphragm. He knew that wasn't the worst. He knew that God the Father was going to strike him with the sins of the entire world. That scripture says he bore in his body. They pulled out his beard and they whipped him and they beat him so severely that scripture says he no longer even resembled a human. His friends all scattered out of fear and doubts. They thought they had been wrong about him and they were so confused and perplexed. They should have known because they knew the law, the Torah, the Old Testament. They knew what the Messiah would do, but yet they saw the Messiah die, so they ran. Jesus was crucified over the crime of blasphemy for claiming to be equal with God. It appeared that it was over. It appeared that the devil had won. There was an earthquake at the time of his death and the sun went black in the middle of the day. So why did he do it? Isaiah 53, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes we are healed. This is a prophecy in the Old Testament about the Messiah. And then Jesus cries out from the cross, it is finished. I want to go to Columbia International University and I want to read something to you about that claim. It's a little lengthy, but it's really important. Take a look. When Jesus cries out, it is finished on the cross. The Greek word used is tetelestai, which means to bring to a close, to complete, to fulfill. What makes this exclamation truly unique, however, is the Greek tense that Jesus used. Jesus speaks in the perfect tense tense, which is a combination of two Greek tenses, the present tense and the aorist tense. The aorist tense is punctular, punctiliar. I don't know that word. I'm sorry. Meaning something that happens at a specific point in time, a moment. The present tense is linear, meaning something that continues on the on into the future and has ongoing result, result implications. The combination of these two tenses in the perfect tense as used in John 19.30 is of overwhelming significance. When Jesus says it is finished or completed, what he's actually saying is it is finished and will continue to be finished. The first element of the perfect tense, the aorist, it is finished is powerful. It is finished, that is, the counsels of the Father concerning his sufferings were now fulfilled. It is finished. All the types and prophecies of the Old Testament which pointed at the sufferings of the Messiah were accomplished. It is finished. The ceremonial law is abolished. 
The substance is now come and all the shadows are done away. It is finished. An end is made of transgression by bringing in everlasting righteousness. His sufferings were now finished, both those of his soul and those of his body. It is finished. The work of man's redemption and salvation is now completed. This is overwhelming in and of itself, but there's more. The aorist tense is only half of the perfect tense. The second element of Jesus' statement is the equally important, the present ongoing linear and will continue to be finished component of the perfect tense. This indicates the ongoing nature of our salvation. This is so important because it indicates a condition, a state of being, a resting place. In conclusion, in Jesus' statement, it is finished. We have a declaration of salvation that is both momentary and eternal, aorist and present, linear and punctiliar. We are saved at a specific point in time. It is finished. Our debt is paid. We are ransomed from the kingdom of darkness. And then we confidently rest in the reality that it will continue to be finished because we are in a position of grace and stand justified for all time before God. One Greek word to telestai, spoken in the perfect tense by Jesus on the cross, and it was finished at that moment and for all time. He did it for you, and he did it for me. He cried, it is finished, and that act of finishing will continue to be finished. It is a saving grace that saves over and over and over and over. Isn't that funny how Watchtower never tells you any of this? Watchtower tells you it's all about sanctifying Jehovah's name. Are you kidding me? It is not. This is what it's all about. Here's some more scriptures, friends, if you want to read a little bit more about the death of Christ on this Good Good Friday. So that's all I have for you today for Good Good Friday. It's such a good, great day. Friends, accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior today. But I almost forgot. Sunday's coming. Enjoy. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd mary's crying peter is denying but they don't know that sundays are coming it's friday the romans beat my jesus they robe him in scar they crown him with thorns but they don't know that sundays come it's friday See Jesus walking to Calvary, his blood dripping, his body stumbling, and his spirit's burden. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning. And evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? 
Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a laugh. It's Friday, Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday, it is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. 